Hello and welcome to this knowledge clip on the International Court of Justice's judgment in the case concerning jurisdictional immunities of the state of 2012. This judgment is extremely significant uh, for the purposes of the law of state immunity. Now, state immunity from jurisdiction is a rule under international law which facilitates uh, the performance of public functions by states. Essentially, state immunity prevents states from being sued before domestic courts for acts of governmental authority, or as they are commonly known, acts jure imperi. So in the jurisdictional uh, immunities case, the International Court of Justice was called upon to tackle the following question. What is the scope and extent of state immunity before foreign domestic courts? in relation to acts that amount to international crimes. To put it differently, can a state perpetrate international crimes, human rights atrocities, and still enjoy immunity before foreign domestic courts? Now, this dispute arose out of two um, sets of proceedings before uh, Italian domestic courts, namely the Ferini case and the Distomo massacre case. Luigi Ferrini was an Italian national who during World War II was arrested by the Nazi armed forces. He was deported to Germany and subjected to uh, forced labor in one of the concentration camps. Many decades later, he filed a claim for compensation against Germany for these acts by the Nazi armed forces and the German Reich. And in 2004, the Italian Court of Cassation accepted that it had jurisdiction to entertain the claim made by Luigi Ferrini, essentially by lifting the immunity of Germany. Uh, Distomo, the Distomo massacre case, Distomo is a village in Greece and in June 1944, um, Nazi armed forces um, massacred 214 civilians who lived in Listomo and set the village ablaze. Again, many decades uh, after the massacre, uh, relatives of the massacre victims filed for compensation against Germany before Greek domestic courts. And the Greek domestic courts decided to lift the immunity of Germany, holding that the state could not be immune when the acts complained of amount to international crimes. Nonetheless, the Greek justice minister refused to authorize the execution of the judgment by the Greek Supreme Court. Following this decision, the relatives of the uh, victims of this Distomo massacred uh, petitioned Italian courts to have the judgment executed in Italy, a claim that Italian courts accepted. So again, they lifted the immunity of Germany. This set of proceedings prompted Germany uh, to bring the case before the International Court of Justice in December 2008. Germany requested the International Court to adjudge and declare that Italy, by allowing civil claims based on violations of the law of war by the German Reich, uh, to be brought against Germany uh, failed to respect the immunity of Germany. And second, that by declaring Greek judgments based on similar violations uh, enforceable in Italy, uh, the latter committed a further breach of Germany's immunity. Now, first of all, the court made a number of key pronouncements in respect of the operation nature of the rule of state immunity. So it held that a right to immunity and international law exists together with a corresponding obligation on the part of other states to respect such immunity. Second, the court found that the immunity derives from the principle of sovereign equality uh, of states and thus any exceptions to immunity may depart from this fundamental principle, implying that any exceptions are to be construed narrowly. And thirdly, the court held that the acts of the Nazi armed forces were unlawful, and this was a fact that not even Germany disputed. Germany acknowledged before the court that these were violations of the law of war. Yet they were done in a governmental capacity, so they were acts jure imperi. So the legality of an action does not condition its characterization as uh, an act of governmental authority, an act done in governmental capacity. 
uh, an act of a state may at the same time be an act jure imperi and be unlawful under international law. Now, Italy, in order to justify the lifting of the immunity of Germany, put, it forth, put forth excuse me, a two-pronged argument. First, Italy argued that there exists under customary international law a territorial tort exception to immunity. And second, Italy argued that immunity may be lifted uh, considering the particularly grave nature of the acts in question. Now, what about the territorial tort exception? So, according to Italy's argument, immunity may be lifted by domestic courts in relation to acts committed by armed, uh, foreign armed forces of a foreign state within the territory of the forum, which resulted in death, personal injury, or damage to property. To put it simply, Italy had the right to lift uh, the immunity of Germany in relation to uh, acts committed by German armed forces within the territory of Italy, which resulted in personal injury. So Italy argued for an exception under customary international law, and the court reviewed a state practice and opinion jurors in relation to this argument uh, to find, to establish whether some, such, such an exception existed under customary international law. And it came to the conclusion that it did not. On the contrary, state practice confirmed the existence of immunity in such cases. Thus, the court rejected this argument by Italy. It's the second argument by Italy which is more elaborate and more significant. So, Italy um, argued that immunity may be lifted considering the nature of the act complained of. And this argument builds on three sub-propositions. One, Italy argued that there can be no immunity for serious violations of human rights law or the law of armed conflict. Italy essentially argued for uh, the emergence of an exception to the rule of state immunity for acts jure imperi under customary international law. To put it in a phrase, Italy argued that the law recognized that one state could not at the same time perpetrate uh, human rights atrocities and uh, be entitled to immunity in relation to those atrocities. The court reviewed national and international case law to find evidence of such a shift in customary law, but ended up rejecting Italian arguments, suggesting that no such exception existed. So immunity persisting despite the nature of these acts. Now, the second proposition by Italy is that there is no immunity when to recognize immunity would conflict with rules of peremptory norms or rules use kogans as they are called under international law. Now, a peremptory norm under international law means that no derogation from that norm is allowed. So, according to Italy, the acts perpetrated by the German armed forces constituted violations of peremptory norms and international law, such as the prohibition of war crimes. To recognize the immunity in this case would conflict with the peremptory norms, the peremptory nature of these rules. And in this case of conflict between a peremptory norm, namely the prohibition of war crimes or the prohibition of uh, human rights abuses, and a non-peremptory norm, essentially immunity, the latter should give way, the latter should yield. So Italy argued that by recognizing immunity, essentially uh, it would be in conflict with uh, a rule of peremptory uh, nature. But according to the court, no such conflict exists because immunity rules are procedural. Peremptory norms uh, under the law of armed conflict or under the no law of human rights are substantial. So the court said that these two sets of rules cannot be in conflict because they deal with dif different aspects of the case. Now, the last argument, uh, the last proposition by Italy but was that there can be no immunity because all other attempts to secure compensation by the victims failed. Again, the court highlighted that whether a state is immune is entirely separate from the matter of compensation. The fact that Germany 
was immune before Italian courts did not mean that it did not owe compensation to the victims. So the proposition that state immunity is dependent upon the existence of alternative means of securing redress had no basis in state practice and thus international custom. And this proposition was also rejected. So on the basis of these considerations, by 12 votes to 3, the International Court of Justice found that Italy had violated its obligation to respect the immunity which Germany enjoyed under international law. Thank you for watching this knowledge clip.